Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. I have a awesome feature highlight for you in SolidWorks. This is really the building block of building blocks, really. It is the Extrude Boss base feature, which is a long, big mouth full of just to say it's an extruding feature. So if you find this tutorial helpful, hit that subscribe button, hit the bell icon because I have a whole slew of other features that are, you're gonna need after learning how to extrude. There are also a lot of more in depth feature or like aspects of this feature. Um, I'm gonna start off first with just the basics. So we have a sketch, we just did a little square. We're gonna click extrude, it's gonna ask us to select the sketch, we'll select it and boom, it's gonna extrude it. First off, we have options to flip the direction of where which direction we're going to extrude. We also have an option to changing the, the length of the extrusion, as well as if we want a draft or like a a, a um, like a taper to the extrusion, we can choose two directions. So if you want to have it going two different directions at the same time, you can do that. And last of all, which is actually kind of a cool feature, one that I've never really used and I don't really know why, is you have the thin feature, which is kind of like a shell feature. You kind of hollow out that 3D model, and you can go one direction, two direction, or mid-plane, so it's it's adding um, thickness from that line, you can see right there. Or you actually go two direction and you can kind of customize how much you want. And last, you can even add caps, end caps. So I put these really small ones, and let's just see what it looks like. So we can click OK. It looks like a normal cube, but if I was to do a cross section, you can actually see it's actually a hollowed out box, which is kind of cool. Yeah, lots you can do there. All right, so we're actually gonna go back and we're going to do a little bit more in depth of the more unique features that you can be doing with Extrude. So I'm actually going to bring in this plane so we can see that, oops, sorry. We're gonna bring it in and we're gonna bring in this big box as well. Extrude, we're gonna click on our sketch. Okay, first and foremost, we can actually change where the extrude is starting from. So typically you're going to be from the sketch plane, but let's say you want it to be coming off of a surface and starting from there. So you can actually start the extrusion from there based off of the sketch, bring it up. Note, you have to have a surface that is over or under the sketch. It won't work for something that's on the side. So we'll deselect that and we'll go to the next one. Vertex, vertex is a point. So we can click a point and it's actually just gonna be extruding very much like an offset from the original um, sketch plane. And that's really all there is to that one. Last we actually have is offset. And so you can actually offset the extrusion or parallel to the plane in which you chose. You can also flip that around, that extrusion from uh, the plane chosen. So go back to sketch plane. All right, now this is where it gets really just total crazy. We can do all sorts of fun things. And that is how you want to actually extrude it. So we can do a through wall, which is just going to extrude it until it's breached every single part it can. In this case, it just got to the top of this big box. So one of the interesting things, we have this box right here, and I'm going to try showing it on and off to kind of showcase it is either a parallel or a perpendicular extrude. So let's say we select this plane, and you can see it has just done a perpendicular extrude all the way through. So it's still a through wall. It's still going up to that point and through it but it's now perpendicular to that face. Kind of a weird additional feature that you can have with that. Let's go to up to next. It's just going to extrude up to the next object. Something to note, if the up to next is smaller, it won't work. It has to be going to something that is larger than your initial sketch. We also have up to vertex, which is up to a certain point. You can see there. And that doesn't have to be above it. That can be over to the side as well. We also have up to surface. This is very similar to up to next, except it's specifically asking for a surface. And the nice thing about that is we can actually go past up to the next thing, which as you can see right here, it's going all the way through the box and to the other side. And we can even do it to this surface right there. It's a really, really useful. But we can also go something offset which is really unique, we can have this nice, fun, circular cutout. Um, next, we have offset from surface. And so I currently have a default that's kind of popped in. Let's put 0.2 and make it a little bit smaller. Let's think about that. There we go. 
And so you can see it's actually offset from that curved surface, which is pretty cool. And we can actually translate that form. And so if we bring it up, you can see that it's actually moving it. Obviously, it does have some restrictions. We also reverse the offset. You can move it up or move it down. As you can see, these are, are really customizing this feature, and there are going to be some times where it's going to get a little weird and wonky, like you saw with that column. Up to body. Very similar to up to next. It's just literally going up to the next body and, and matching that surface. And last but not least, mid plane. This and blind are honestly going to be your two most commonly used, the very first and very last. Kind of weird. But so mid plane is it is just extruding both directions the exact same amount from that initial sketch. This is really, really helpful, especially if you're starting off in the very beginning and you have just started out the origin. It's a great way of keeping the origin in the dead center of your actual part that you're modeling. And that is it. That is all of the different ways that you can manipulate the extrude feature. Definitely a whole lot more to it than just pulling and pushing a block. But that is most of the time what you're going to be using it for. Hope you found this video helpful. If you have any questions or comments, I really would love to know. Leave them down in the comment, the comment section down below. Hit that subscribe button. And as always, keep modeling. We'll see you.